right there. All right. So here's the good thing. We are recording the stream, or not the stream, but the the episode for YouTube and whatever. Ah, I'm kidding. And I'll just stream it back to uh, Periscope later. There you go. He said, uh, oh, there we go. Daniel, he said, I've been waiting. It's my excuse to put off college algebra. (laughs) Put it off as long as you can. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Mine is shared out. How about I close the audio there? It's much better when it actually works, you know? So for everybody that is on, uh, yeah, that's uh, my wife. Yes, we are doing this thing. It, it took forever. My apologies. Everybody knows. All right, so uh, for you that are on Facebook, go on and share this thing out. If you're listening on the podcast or whatever, if you're listening later, share it on Facebook, share it on Periscope, uh, Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. You know how we do. All right, let's go on and start recording. Let's get the uh, the first thing out of the way. You looking for an online sports book with fast payouts and easy to use interface? Look no further than mybookie.ag. Payouts in only two business days, the best customer service out there, the best odds, and even live betting. Go take a look for yourself at mybookie.ag, and once you figure out that it's the best, sign up with promo code WCE50 for a 50% deposit bonus. That's mybookie.ag, promo code WCE50. I'm Gary Seegers. Catch me on Twitter at GaryWCE. And I'm Chris Giannini. Follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast from winningcureseverything.com. Before we get started, please subscribe to the podcast, share it, and review it. We cannot stress how important those reviews are for iTunes rankings, so help us out. Those of us who love this sport live for nights like this. You are looking live at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. 40. 40 years. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. This is Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up, what up? Podcast number 193. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. All right, so on today's show, to go on and get this out there, we're talking College Football National Signing Day, which was yesterday. Absolutely incredible finish for Georgia, but we'll talk about that. Josh McDaniels leaves the Colts at the altar on Tuesday night. We got four big stories. We're going to talk about Josh Passner's sexual assault allegations, uh, the NBA trade deadline, NFL talk, uh, and some college football stuff. And uh, we're going to talk about the state of the UFC after fight night 125 from Brazil this past Saturday night and the possibility of a McGregor versus Mayweather MMA fight. Chris, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We're doing this uh, a little bit later. Um, Chris's daughter had a birthday last night. I'm done with the birthdays for the year. That's a, you. Both of your daughters are like right there next to each other. Yeah, they're like a week apart. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, get it over with. It's a week apart, and like the Super Bowl always fits right in the middle, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a point of contention sometimes. Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. But it's still good. It's yeah. still good. All right, you want to talk some uh, some college football? Sure. Come on. It's game day, baby. Wake up or get out. My least Let's excited go. part of college football. National Signing Day. God. Let's just the go second ahead. one. So Georgia won the national championship. Does Alabama have to give them the trophy back? No. Okay. No, that's, just, the, that's the good thing. All right. I didn't know that. It seemed like they won yesterday, and we should give them a trophy for it. Well, that's kind of what everybody made it out to be, right? I mean, I remember when Ole Miss did that, and then they still never, like, did anything great. Well, I mean, they, they won a Sugar Bowl. It got them on NCAA probation, but <laughs> but they got a Sugar Bowl. So, uh, Georgia wins the day. They've got seven five-stars and 15 four-stars. That is freaking ridiculous. Um, It looks like what Kirby Smart is doing at Georgia is what Alabama's been doing for nine years, ten years, however long it is. Breaking up the checkbook? Something like that. But a lot of teams are doing that. So, number one was Georgia, number two, Ohio State, three, Texas, four, USC, Five, Penn State. Six, Clemson. Number seven, Alabama. 
Number eight, Miami. Number nine, Oklahoma. And number 10, Notre Dame. Alabama fans are acting like the sky is falling. It is just ridiculous. Yeah, they're supposed to win, right? Yeah. They're supposed to be like the best at everything. And it's, look, sometimes it don't always work like that. And it it's the same thing with LSU fans, right? LSU fans. There's a difference. There's a difference. One, you have a trusted savior that you follow blindly. Yeah. And, and you just trust in the process. The other made a knee-jerk reaction and an impulse hire and now you're trusting this person to pull off something that they are starting to believe maybe he can't pull off. Two totally yeah. different circumstances. Oh, no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I completely understand that. But here's the thing. With Alabama, they are changing a ton of coordinators and assistant coaches and et cetera, et cetera, right? Saban knew this was coming. It's what I, I actually put an article on the website about it. WinningCuresEverything.com. If you haven't been to it, go check it out. Um, Saban knew this was coming, and he is nicely forcing some people out the door, right? Aaron Suttles at Tide News, or Tide, uh, TideSports.com. That's Tuscaloosa News. Um, he and several other people have gone on national shows and said, look, people inside the organization knew that this was going on, Saban was not happy with the older guys that he's hired. He's bringing in younger guys. He's bringing in guys that get after him recruiting. And a lot of this is because the rumor is that Kirby Smart and his staff are out there negative recruiting against Alabama. Right? So Nick Saban's not going to be around for long. Like, you need to come to Georgia and you need to – all this kind of mess. And they're they're making up crap about – uh, you'll never get to play at Alabama. Look at their roster. Like you're never gonna get to play there. But, but Georgia, you don't think every school in the SEC. Has been I absolutely that stuff? agree that every school does that. But I think that Saban takes it personally when Kirby does it. From everybody that's around that program, they are convinced that Saban is more hungry right now. And that's why I went out and got Josh Gaddis from Penn State. That's why I went out and got Pete Golding from uh, Texas San Antonio. He's getting these young guys, really young guys that are smart, that know what they're doing, and that are hungry. As opposed to Carl Dunbar, that he calls up his buddies in the NFL and says, hey, I need this guy to get a job. Hey, I need Brian Dable to get a job. Brian Dable didn't get one recruit this whole season. That's not his job. I understand that, but that's what Saban is saying. Everybody on smart staff is recruiting. He was a top five offensive mind in, in college football. I don't know if I buy that. Well, then, Saban then was can... not upset to see him go. He was not upset at all to see him go. Okay. So, um, but yeah. So do you think this sets up like an Alabama-Georgia rivalry for at least a few more years? Because Saban cares more? Yeah. No. How many teams in the SEC do you think Saban really cares about? Well, he stopped caring about Ole Miss once he got Hugh fired. <laughs> So, he doesn't care about LSU now that he's gotten less fired. All right. So, I mean, I guess. But what are you going to play Georgia? Hope in the SEC, in the SEC well, championship game. That's about gotta, it. You gotta, your ass got to make the SEC championship game. You hadn't done that. And so do they. So do they. Because you got Pruitt at Tennessee now. You, got, you don't know what they're going to turn into. They ain't turning into what Georgia is right now. But you never know. Alabama's had the number one recruiting class for how long? And they still lose sometimes. I know. They this didn't don't even mean, win the SEC championship game. I know. And that's what I'm saying. This doesn't mean that Georgia is going to go undefeated. I, I this, is, this is why I hate this stuff. I also hate it because we're putting 17 and 18-year-old kids in front of national TV with a table in front of them and a tablecloth and their family <laughs> with like five different schools gear on all around them Yeah, for them to pick a damn hat up or write their name on a piece of paper. Nothing good has ever come of that. It is the most obnoxious thing for me to watch. I will never get into this. Once they start playing, once they start practicing, I will get into practice. And I will I get into how that. these guys are working together. I watched Dan Mullins at Mississippi State take a bunch of three-star guys that nobody has ever heard of before and win football games on a consistent level. I have Against watched, teams that were better than that. That's are, right. Or supposed to be better. That's right. I've, I've watched that happen for a while, and other coaches do it too. Developing talent is a big deal. 
Yeah, it absolutely is. It, it is so important. Now, you're right. There's a reason, er, reason Urban and Saban and these guys that are at the top of this recruiting class are always kind of at the top. But at the end of the day, at some point in time, you got to have dudes that know how to coach these kids up. I do agree with that. I do agree with that. The, the end of the matter is that signing day does matter. These recruiting classes do matter. Out of the last 22 seasons, there has not been but one team that did not have at least two top ten classes by the national rankings in the four years before they win the national title. The only one was Oklahoma, and they had a number 11 class, a number 13 class, and two top 25 classes alongside that. And that was Bob Stoops' second season. Other than that, all the other ones have had that. So this coming season, there's only like 12 teams that can win it. And it's based on talent and coaching. But the talent has to be there too. I don't disagree with that. So that's why this day matters, man. But this I mean, is... I'm, I'm Baker Mayfield was not one of these guys picking up hats. No, he on, wasn't on, on on some Tuesday afternoon. No, he was walking on to Texas Tech. School. I mean, you see kids come from out of nowhere to wreck college football every year. Absolutely. It just happens. It just happens. But it, but that doesn't mean that signing day doesn't matter. Didn't say it didn't. I just don't care about it. Totally understand. I, I here's the thing. Even if I did care about it. I want a professional writer to tell me what happened and why it's important. I don't want to watch a 17-year-old kid that hasn't graduated high school yet, he doesn't yet have a high school education, be put on national TV, be asked questions from legit professional reporters, not know how to answer them, and embarrass himself on TV wearing four different schools gear all around him with his family and everybody cheering and making a big deal about it. He got a scholarships and that's awesome. And that's great. And I hope it changes his life, but we don't need to put him on TV at 17 and already make a mockery of this guy. I do agree with that. Did you see the that's guy that, that, uh, that went to Florida? Yeah. His mom gets up and once, walks out once again, Nothing good, not one thing good has ever come from these kids being on TV at 17 years old, national TV. You want a local TV news it, whatever, for the, you know, 6 o'clock news locally, we're having a different conversation. They don't need to be on ESPN and Fox and all these other news broadcasts. They just don't need to be there. I can understand that. It can only embarrass them by saying something that they shouldn't say or answering a question in the wrong way because they are not prepared for this stuff. No, not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Um, we got a question on Facebook. Coach O gone after this year? I don't know. It there's there's no way to tell. start the damn season. Yeah, the recruiting stuff, you can't, like, it, there's no way to know that. He got one five-star and 12 four-stars, and it, what, Alabama had a bunch of them last year, but, right. but I mean, my God, what did you have, like, five of them that really stood out? Yeah. Like, and, and hardly any of them started. That's right. So, like, you don't know what these guys are going to turn into. No. Mark Ingram was a three-star, and he became a Heisman Trophy winner. So if, it's, if O wins nine games, he'll keep his job. If he wins four games, he'll lose his job, and he'll have nothing to do with recruiting. My guess is because none of these kids he's that got we two recruit, more years. none of these kids that we recruit are going to make an impact next year. Better hope some of them do. None of these true freshmen are going to make an impact next year. I, some of them could. Like, we, oh, we don't could. know which ones. You're right. They so could. I'm not going to say that none of them will, but, you know, that's that's a big thing, man. Like It's it, rare. It, it is rare, but, I mean, my gosh, you look at the, the the fourth quarter for Alabama in the national championship game, I mean, you never know when this stuff's going to pop up. So it, okay. it matters. It's, it's a big deal. And you do have kids sometimes that do pop up and make a big deal, but there's just no way of telling. They, how are we supposed to know – which kid is going to be good and which one's not? I mean, obviously you got the then you rankings look and all at the this situation. You got to look at the setup. I mean, this kid walks onto a field where everybody around him is going to go play the NFL. Yeah, it's real easy for him to look good when he has the ability. He has yes, but if he well, did see, that on anybody else's roster, he doesn't look that good. No, I, I look at uh, look at it's Najee Harris, kid. right? Harris at Alabama, fourth string running back. He was the number one player in the country by. Yeah. All of the Can't, recruiting rankings and, last year. And Kirby's right. Can't get on the field. Can't get on the field. So so that negative recruiting's not a lie. It's not eh. it's not wrong. Well, no, I mean he got on the field. Like it's not like he didn't play. He's a four string running back. Yeah, he's a four string, yeah. He he made his way out there. He he was the leading rusher in the national championship game. I'll tell you that right now. All right.
Let's, uh... So, your boy, Josh McDaniels. Oh, yeah. This is a fun story. <laughs> uh-huh. So, McDaniels agreed about a month ago, apparently, to be the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, it was pretty common knowledge that uh, that whenever the Patriots playoff run ended, Matt Patricia was headed to the Lions, and O.C. Josh McDaniels was going to the Indianapolis Colts. Now, let's go through the rumors right quick. Okay. We, we can rank these if you want. You want to rank, rank them? Forget, before we rank them, let's talk about what happened, okay? Okay. So, Tuesday, Josh is in the office. He's on a phone call with the Colts brass for a couple of hours talking through assistant coaching hires, building a staff, getting approvals for certain things. And then at some point in time throughout that day, he meets with Robert Kraft, he meets with Bill Belichick, and he decides to stay at New right. England. He's There's already staff members hired and contracts signed in Indianapolis. Correct. And he decides that he wants to stay in New England. Correct. And this is after they have been holding this position open. Every other NFL team has hired their head coach. Correct. Except for them. And something happens. And we don't know exactly what happened. All we know is he wanted to stay in New England. So let's go through these one by one. Okay. All right. First off. Uh huh. That didn't play right, did it? <laughs> First off, Andrew Luck is not healthy. So Chris, this this was my reaction. Chris this Mortensen was... came out and reported on that. Did you read the report? No, I didn't read that. But I know that everybody I talked to that that texted me that night immediately thought it was something else on this list. And I said, this is going to have more to do with the Colts doing something wrong or something Josh didn't like than the the Patriots making him an offer he can't refuse to stay in OC. My initial reaction was they had told him some type of information like they did at the beginning of the season. Okay. Andrew Luck's going to be fine. There's no big deal. You're going to have him. And once Tuesday got there, he was able to get some hardcore information on Luck, and he found out this guy's not as healthy as they made it out to be. And this was this Mortensen just, this said he is going. I thought, yeah, Mortensen is is reporting that he is going to have to go back under the knife. He's got to go into surgery the, again, then I and he may not justified. play all of next season. Then I feel completely justified for all those people that I told to eat it. Well, yeah. I mean, I would tell him to eat it, too. But that's, like, because, that's, is, because that's what I think happened. That's exactly what I think happened. Well, look. I took a job under false pretenses. You told me I was going to have X. And I, now I'm finding and now out I, don't have, I don't have the biggest X factor in the whole thing. Then you don't have a coach. Yeah. Yeah. But, but why would him talking to New England be... The reason for that. Because now he's got to say, hey, I know I, hey, I didn't turn him in two weeks. But maybe I don't need to do that I anymore. I need to, hey, have y'all hired an OC yet? That's an important thing that he needs to do. Because they've pretty much hired a DC already. Yeah, yeah. So why would they not already have an OC that they're in negotiations with? He's got to get in there quick and say, hey, man, don't give him a job away. I don't want to take this thing. Here's the other rumor, uh, one of them. Bob Kraft and Bill Belichick plan this to get back at the Colts for Deflate Gate. I would love for this to be true. <laughs> I would, nothing would make me happier. I figure you'd be than, laughing than about this, that. For this to be true. I don't think this is what happened, but I, I love it. It would be really funny. I think fishing has happened with the side of the Colts, and Josh was like, I'm not going to be involved in an organization that, that's not going to be open and honest with with me. All right, here's the other one. Bill Pelichek is retiring soon, and McDaniels was told privately that he will be the next head coach at New England. And on top of that, WEEI's Kirk and Callahan show, the one that's in the morning that Tom Brady goes on, et cetera, et cetera, they have reported that they hear that Belichick will be stepping down in the next few weeks. So I don't believe that at all. Now I don't either. He's the same age as Nick Saban, he's maybe a touch older. He's 66 years old. Yeah. I, I'm not saying he's going to coach until he's 80, but retiring at 66 after losing a Super Bowl like that, I just can't see it. I don't see it either. I can't see I, Now, I could be wrong, but so so then you say the word soon is a relative term. 
if he doesn't retire this offseason, you don't turn down a head coaching job to be an OC for three or four years in waiting head coach because too many things can happen when you could just take another head coaching job, keep the relationship with Kraft that you have, and then if Bill retires, you say, hey, Bill, or, or you know, Kraft, I'm coming back. Like, all you have to do is keep, you know, a close ear between Bill and Kraft and know when to structure your contract. Yeah, I agree. Like, that's not a difficult thing at all to do. The other side of this is uh, McDaniel's agent, Bob Lamont, or Lamonti. How, how do you say that? It's, it'd be Lamont. I think Lamont. he is. Uh, he terminated his relationship with Josh after he was blindsided by him backtracking on his agreement to become coach of the Colts. Lamont told a source that McDaniels was, quote, committing professional suicide. Now, here's the kicker. Lamont is also the agent for Colts GM Chris Ballard. So this is one of those where you kind of have to pick and choose sides, right? you well, you got to decide who you're going to go with because you that, can't go with both. That's All right, so this is another reason why I don't think you turn this job down unless you have some justification for it. Yeah. Because I do think that there's a level of career suicide here. Well, I mean, and I would I would say that unless you're going to get the head coaching job of the Patriots the next year. Well, look like no, really no. quickly. Look at look at what uh Billy Donovan did. Look at Dana Altman no, at Oregon. No, 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 stop, at, stop. We need to stop right there. Both of those are not the NFL. They're not the NFL. The NFL owners have proven time and time again they will under the table, commit collusion, i.e. Colin Kaepernick and 20 other people before that. Doug Marone walked away. He had a clause in his contract that allowed him to leave the Bills organization once they changed ownership. If he didn't like the new direction the owners went, he walked away one of the best coaches in, in the NFL and could not get an NFL head coaching job. Got, yeah. got sent to Siberia got sent to Jacksonville to be an OC under one bumbling idiot after another, but nobody would hire him as a head coach until he paid his time in purgatory. Do not tell me the NFL would not collude the hell out of one another and say, oh, you did my boy. You know, while we make fun of Ursay, you know Ursay is a good time at a party. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, 100%. There's no doubt some of these owners – Smoke a little bath salts with Ursay and, and say, hey, I got you, buddy. I got you. I'm not giving this guy a job. No question in my mind. Yeah. No, so, I'm, I'm with so you. His, he has to have justification for doing this outside of Kraft and Bill made me an offer I can't refuse. There is no OC job offer that, that you can't refuse over a head coaching job. I don't believe that. If Bill doesn't retire before next season starts, then, then – then you don't do that unless the Colts did something fishy. You just don't. I think that you are probably right. I think you're probably right. And you're dealing with an owner that we have caught on multiple times with hardcore narcotics on him. Yeah. Like in his system. And you know that he will be spreading the word, telling everybody, you can't touch this guy. Yeah. No doubt. Like no matter what you try and do, you can't touch this and guy. And he's Go got get a somebody lot of else. friends in the organization. The, the, league. the only way that this works out is if McDaniels has been promised the head coaching job at New England, I think. Nah, but and, if Josh, let's say he hasn't been. If he can show, hey, I'm going to get a new agent and I'm going to get all the information out there, the stuff that Chris Mortensen reported, I can prove that they didn't tell me any of this stuff and I was hired under false pretenses, then there are other owners that are like, I get it. I totally understand why like you, you walked yeah, away from that. You were you told were, that you were going to have luck. You had and, a verbal agreement, and the verbal agreement was you agreed to X if they agreed to Y, and their Y was not what you said. What they said it was. So you, you have the right to walk away from that. You are entirely right. All right, on top of that, Colts GM Chris Ballard, as he finished his press conference about Josh McDaniels not being the new Colts head coach, said, quote, the rivalry is back on, and then he walked <laughs> away from the mic. Why would you a, even make that statement? What a what a mic drop. Some a dude mic drop. <laughs> what some dude that nobody's ever heard of before? Exactly. And and everybody's going to forget his name in 5 minutes. How, how did anybody actually know that Chris Ballard was the GM no, of the Colts absolutely until not. this is the most publicity that guy's gotten his entire life. I know. And he, like his he's own, a new his guy. Obama didn't know he had that job. 
So, and she doesn't care either. And she doesn't think it's a rivalry. No, not in the slightest. No. Not in the slightest. No. So, yeah, I, I don't understand it. I this think is it's... the difference between Saban and Belichick. You like to always make these comparisons. This is the difference. Saban enters into the squabbles with the children, i.e. smart. He yeah. takes things personal. Nick could give two wet craps about what's going on with anybody else's organization. Yeah, he doesn't he, care. He does not care. And here's the ruthless thing. He probably doesn't care about Josh either. Oh, no. Josh, you're not taking the job? Oh, now I don't have to hire somebody else. Exactly. Like that's, but that, literally, it's that's it. I was going to pick up the phone to three people and get three people to say yes, and now I get to pick which one I want. Like, that was what his Tuesday was going to be before this happened. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the easy I think easy he's thing. the most emotionless person I've ever seen do a job. You talking about Saban or, or oh, Belichick? Belichick. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, no. He's just on to the next one. That's right. Like, it's, all right, you want to stay? That's cool. He takes nothing personal because he has no feelings at all about it. If we start seeing McDaniels more involved in in things that go on with Belichick, then I think we'll have more of an idea of what's going on with that. And if Bill's grooming him, that's a completely different conversation. Yes. But I don't think you But I felt like he was from, grooming him anyway. Yeah. You don't walk away from a head coaching opportunity for three more years of OC. You just don't do that. No, that, that doesn't make any sense. So, doesn't make any sense. All right. Uh, let's move on to the four big stories. All right. So... Four big stories. First one, Josh Pasner. Georgia Tech head coach, former Memphis head coach. Let's jump into it. He had a lawsuit filed against him today by Jennifer Penley. That is Ron Bell's girlfriend. So to get everyone caught up on the story, Ron Bell got mad at Pasner. They're buddies and whatnot, have been since uh, since the Memphis days, really since he was at Arizona. Used to be buddies. I bet you, they're not buddies they're, anymore. They're not buddies anymore. I, I guarantee that. So he got mad at Passner for not being as close a friend to him as he used to be. He was pissed off because Passner didn't call him on his birthday. So Bell had been providing Passner's players with extra benefits, dating all the way back to his days at Memphis. He provided some of the kids at Georgia Tech extra benefits and whatnot. Uh, he went ahead and let the NCAA know what all that was. Um, the NCAA checked it out. The guys, the two players got suspended for, you know, like three, four games, whatever. It wasn't anything major. It was just, all right, well, you paid for a couple of plane tickets and whatever, so they got to pay you back for those. And and now they're back playing, and life went on, right? And nothing well, happened to Pastor. Nothing happened to no. Georgia Tech's Georgia program. Tech came out and said, look, yeah, we believe that he didn't know that he, like, that NCAA violations were being broken or right. that whatever. They were being, vi rules were being violated. There we go. Uh, Bell came out to CBS Sports, gave Gary Parish all of this information, all of it, and and just absolutely threw Passner under the bus. He was so mad because Passner didn't call him on his birthday. Right? That's that's mainly what this came down to. So all that stuff goes away, and then last month, Passner comes out and files a lawsuit, like a defamation lawsuit, against Bell and his girlfriend who is Jennifer Penley. And then you don't hear much about it. And now today, Jennifer Penley comes out and puts a sexual harassment or a sexual assault lawsuit on Pastner. And she is accusing him of exposing himself and pleasuring himself in front of her while he was at Memphis. Now, that, that first sounds, off, I don't buy like, this in the slightest. No, that sounds like Josh, doesn't it? I, I, I mean... Look, I've met Josh multiple times. I'm not like best buddies with him. No, but like, but you didn't have to have met him to know his personality. That dude, like, he doesn't cuss. He doesn't drink caffeine. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't chew tobacco. He like nothing. This dude is as clean cut as it gets. I've been wrong about people before, but I don't. I don't know that he. I don't think I'm wrong here. Pleasures himself in in like the privacy of his own like bathroom, much less. No. In front of somebody like that. He's got, what, like four kids? Isn't that I right? I think it's I four know. kids now. Um, so, look, the deal with Bell, first off, that's a bad decision to have that guy around your program anyway. Yep. So that was a mistake, right? Bell got brought in. Bell was, like, he was in prison and all this kind of stuff, but he claims that Passner saved his life, that, you know, all this mess, right? Well, 
First off, yeah, it's a bad decision to have this guy that just came out of prison around your program. Second, if you're Georgia Tech, what do you do? Here's the deal. Like, you've got, in today's age, where you've got the Me Too movement and all that crap, right? Not crap, but you get the point. I get it. It is horrible to not believe a woman when she comes out and says that she was abused or assaulted, right? On the other hand, it is super wrong for a guy to possibly lose his job and end his career for something that never happened. If he is 100% innocent, like, the problem here is that all this crap ended up coming out. Like, Ron Bell, when he was talking about all this stuff, never once brought up the passenger. He was trying to throw passenger under the bus you would to begin have thought with. this would have been brought up back Early. then when they were trying to make him look bad. Exactly. So, I mean, if you're Georgia Tech, what do you do? Passenger's attorney, by the way, has released a statement, and it's on Twitter and everywhere. You can find it everywhere. But he completely, 100% denies the alley. He calls them lies. No, that's, Flat that's out what, lies. I mean, that, you know, we, we've talked about this. We're making an assumption based on what we know about Josh. Have people fooled me in the past yet? Are, are, do monsters look like everyday people? Sure. Do sometimes the ultra-good Christian person really is a sociopath? Yeah. We've seen that. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where if you were trying – if this was a legit claim – Last month, when or last year, when all this stuff came out, I think it would have came out then. That's what I thought. If I, I'm, I if I'm Georgia believe. Tech and you see the same people coming after him, and they see the first time they came after him, really nothing happened to him, I think I stand by him. Now, I definitely, you have to cover yourself by, you know, hiring outside private investigators to look into the situation. To, I have no idea how you're supposed to investigate something like this. It's a, above my pay grade and means of understanding Ooh, how I'm, that stuff works. I'm with you. But you you do some type of trying to figure out, is this probable or not? Just so you can cover yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what I would do in this situation. I mean, I, there's there's no right. Like, in, in one case, if she's... If she's actually being truthful about this, then it's a got to go situation. It's got to go. Yeah. But if she's not, like that's awful to have reprimanded a guy when he's a hundred percent innocent. Yeah, you know, like there's no proof of any of this. There's no not, like on on one hand, like I don't believe that Josh Pastor would ever do this, but we don't know. We don't know. So, I I don't... Look, I don't envy those guys at all at Georgia Tech. I, I don't like what her and her boyfriend did last year. That the We're looking at credibility right now as people like you and me seeing this play out in the public's eye, and we're having to pick sides. We don't just have some random woman coming out of the woodworks making an accusation. We have someone who has already tried to hurt this man's career once, by, you know, saying some things that would hurt him professionally. Yes. They saw that didn't work, and so now we're going after something a little deeper. That's my thought process. Because I'm with I, you. I think if I'm this dude, this dude has spent time in the clink, okay? If he knew that Josh sexually assaulted or harassed his girl, I have a feeling that we would have known about that long ago and that he would have tried to have taken care of that himself. Or they would have just it based have off been, of my information from right. people who have spent time in the clink. It wouldn't have been two, three years ago. That's right. Like it, no, that, no, no, no. I don't buy that Josh would have done anything like that at Memphis because his job was already in trouble anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I just was, don't buy that. He was never walking around comfortable enough to take his pants off in no, public. You, you right about that. All right. Story number two. So Jimmy Garoppolo and the Forty ers have agreed this morning. Thursday morning, to a five-year, $137.5 million contract that is $27.5 million a year. Lord, that's the a lot of money. biggest deal in NFL history on an average per year basis. Now, of course, this changes every single year. 
there's always somebody that is the highest paid player in the history of the NFL every year now, right? Now, are you surprised that they paid him this much money? Yes. Now tell me this. Will they be able to get the players that they need if they're paying that much for a starting quarterback? Uh, I think they have a lot of draft picks. So, yeah, they're just going to go after young talent. Well, we got to remember Jimmy's young too, man. Yeah, I mean he's really young, and and yes, he had what like a six game winning streak at the end of the season. I think yeah. he's six and zero, or no, he's uh, no, he, eight and zero as a starter. Yeah, yeah but say yeah, he didn't lose a game. Or no, 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 he's they didn't win. He's nine and zero because he he was three and zero as a starter at uh, New England. No, he's only two and zero. Two and zero. He he got hurt. He didn't play all four of those games. Ah, uh, that's right. That's right. So, he he only started two of them. So okay, yeah. Um, you you just think they're going to go young for as long as they can figure it out. That's a lot of money, man. I I it's like absurd. Jimmy. This is why you trade Jimmy last year. Everyone tried to make this, you know, Bill's whatever, yada, yada, yada. Bill was not going to pay Jimmy Garoppolo $27.5 million a year to stay the Patriots quarterback. He doesn't pay Tom Brady $27.5 million a year. No. He wasn't going to let – we always talk about how all of the old veteran gets let go and the young guy stays. But the young guy is usually on a rookie deal. And so it makes sense dollars it, – it makes value sense, okay? Yeah. This – there's no way you can justify paying – being the Patriots, paying Jimmy Garoppolo almost $30 million when you're only paying Tom 20 and one is the greatest quarterback to ever lace them up. And the other one is just a dude that has eight starts. And they are eight great starts. But he still only got eight starts. He yeah. still averaged two turnovers a game last year. Like, he he still got growing pains and learning to do. If you're the 49ers, it's a good deal because he's going to grow with your young franchise. If you're the Patriots and you're an older team winning right now, you let that boy go and you get something for him. What they get for him, they got a second round pick. Oh, well, they could have got more from Cleveland or they could have got more from New York or somebody else. Well, guess what? They wanted to keep a good relationship with him and his agent. So they don't want to send him to Siberia. They want to send him to Jacksonville. They want to send him to Kyle Shanahan. Somebody they believe can actually enhance his career, they wanna, help him grow. Yeah, so when he becomes yeah. a free agent in five years, they can say, hey, you're on the free agent market. Remember who did you right. Let's consider coming back here. If you're not going to stay with San Francisco, come back come here back afterwards. New England. Josh McDaniels may be head coach. That's right. You know, <laughs> You know all the same people in the building. We still got the key card. I love it. I love it. Like, I don't understand why everyone made this huge gripe between Kraft and Bill and Tom and he's got to go. This is the reason he had to go. $27.5 million a year. For five years. Yeah. That's, That's why he had to go. Yeah. So He was a unrestricted free agent. They could have franchised him and paid him $28 million a year. That would have been dumb. Yeah, I agree with that. You had to let him go. You had to. You had to come up with something. So you second got a round second pick. round pick, and you keep a good relationship with him, and you have a good relationship now with the 49ers front office to make trades later. You didn't, what, you what didn't do, screw him. What do you think about um, about Nick Foles then? Is Foles worth a second round pick if they're going to keep growing with Carson Wentz? You know how I think about that, man. I, I just yeah, I, I know. think he's we a win. product of a system. I know. I'm with you. He he's did been just in, win a Super Bowl. He's been into. And that's another thing. As soon as – they better not get rid of him too quickly because as soon as the shine comes off Carson this much, guess oh, what? Oh, yeah. That people going to be upset. You just let go of the Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith paid Urban Meyer $6.4 million last year as head coach in Columbus. But when it comes to other schools paying their head coaches, he's not a fan of that, which is a little ridiculous, right? We've talked about this before, right? Like Just, Urban yeah. Meyer has got to be one of the world's greatest assholes. Yeah, he's he's up there. He's and, way and up here, there. And here's the difference. Nick and Saban are jerks to the media because they want to give nothing away about their team and how things are ran. Right. He puts on this pretty face for the media 
but he's just a dick. Yeah, he absolutely is. I agree with that. I agree. And I don't think there's any hiding that. This guy's just a jerk. This is what Gene Smith, the Ohio State AD, said. He said, uh, I don't even put Texas A&M in our sphere. Now, remember, Jimbo Fisher got a 10-year, $7.5 million a year contract that is completely guaranteed. Alabama's Nick Saban is also making over $11 million a year. Both of them have insanely high-paid assistant coaches. Right, yes. Their coaching staffs are ridiculous. Now, if you look at how much money they are bringing in, that is just a drop in the bucket. Well, I'm sure Ohio that's State's the same. I'm sure Ohio State's Well, exactly, but that's, that's what's cracking me up about this. So he said, uh, he said I don't even put uh, <laughs> Texas A&M in our sphere because I'm considering Urban's situation with three years left on his contract, Smith said during Ohio State's Board of Trustees Talent and Compensation Committee meeting. Uh, talking with Susan Basso, Vice President of Human Resources, and Joanna McGoldrick, Associate Vice President of Total Rewards, that's not even someone that we're comparing with because it's so ridiculous. Talking about Jimbo Fisher. Um, so that means Urban's not getting that contract. He said it's the same way with Alabama and their total salary. Take it off the sheet because it doesn't matter because it's just no value to it. It's a reactionary type of management. Now, is there any doubt in your mind that once it's time to re-up with Urban Meyer that the Buckeyes administration is going to back up the Brinks truck for Meyer to stay on board? I, I'm really curious to see how Mer, Ur, Urban handles this. Does he take less money because he thinks this is ridiculous, or does he say those boys down there are making it? He I was make already it too. the second highest paid coach in the country until Harbaugh came along. That's right, and he has been four years. He yes. was that in Florida. It has always been him and Saban. Yeah, I don't believe now. Jimmy come in his back door. He don't like that. Nope, don't like that. Jimbo, Jimbo down south, getting, nope. getting paid. I, all Dan, of it's, Dan Mullen making close to what he makes now, never done anything. It, but I just think it's ridiculous. Well, uh, well, Mullen's making what, like $5 million a year? No, he's making like no, six. No, he? he's making what Urban, uh, Urban's that making. That is just insane. Yeah. So yeah. I don't believe that when it's time to re-up his contract that they're not going to give him whatever as, he wants. Whatever he wants. So my question is, what does he want? Because if this is ridiculous, what do you want, Urban? And then are you gonna are you gonna consider that ridiculous? I <laughs> I think I think he's one I think of the he's most being put in a hard situation. People here. people nationwide, especially SEC guys, for some reason have this vendetta against Jim Harbaugh, which I find laughable. I think he's a, a comic book character. I really like Jim Harbaugh. He's He's funny and and he's entertaining. He didn't do so hot on the recruiting trail this I don't, this I don't, I don't care about God. I don't care about it. I understand kids. that, but my no God, one cares, that was what Gary. his big thing was. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, how do you find him more likable than Urban? I just can't figure out. More like likable or less likable? More likable. Like so many people don't like him, but they like Urban. I just don't get that. I don't. Oh, no, I'm, I'm with you. Like, like I understand I, Ohio State people. Yeah, you're connected to it. Everybody else is not connected to it. Man, they all talk so much trash about Harbaugh, but they blow Urban like he's God's gift of football. Because he got, what, three national championships? That's I don't it. don't care. That's the only reason. I don't care. He That's all big it boy is. Schools. The other dude coached his entire life at smart kid schools and then the NFL. Yeah, and, he, and he's pretty successful, but he hadn't won a championship yet. God. And that's where it all comes down to. You know that ring matters, man. He just needs to go back to the NFL. You take, know that ring matters. Just take the Bears job. Ta screw the Bears job. Take the Colts job. <laughs> Don't take the Colts job. Don't go work for that dude hey, smoking would, bath salts all day. How upset would you be if he actually did that? I wouldn't be upset. They're, I think you'd be pretty upset. They are five years away from being good. Bill Belichick couldn't coach them into being good right now. Nick Saban couldn't coach them to be in good right now. They have no <laughs> talent at all. Their offensive line is worse than Swiss yeah. cheese. Their defense is the worst in the country. They got the oldest running back on the planet and nobody to back him up. They got two decent young receivers. Look, they look got at a it this way. Quarterback with no shoulder. I'm with you. What, I understand. What that's what they got. An is. owner that that does more methamphetamines than the crackhead down the street in the trailer park. What are we scared of? Indianapolis fans would welcome Harbaugh for several more years. If Harbaugh goes 8-4 and four again at Michigan, what do you think Michigan fans are going to do? They, they might run him out of town. That's fine. Come back to the NFL. You're better in the NFL. Just don't take the Colts job. 
Why? Why would you take the Colts job? Because it's an NFL job. No, screw that. You're too good for that. Go take the the Bears will fire their coach after one year. He's terrible. <laughs> he could take the Denver job. Now that would be scary. You who who did the Bears me. hire? I have no idea. I don't he's, know off the top of my head either. He's an offensive coordinator from somewhere that I've never heard of. I've never I have never heard of this dude before ever until he got hired by the Bears. Oh, <laughs> I, oh, we're I, gonna cut that. Hold up. What? I think he's the Chiefs' offensive coordinator. That's who it was. That's who it was. Dude was OC for like half a year. Yep. Yeah. No. It's hey. Look, everybody seemed to think it was a great hire. Maybe it's, it's Matt something. I could be wrong. I don't sorry, remember off the top of my head. Throwing this poor Jamoke off of off a cliff. That's Didn't mean good. to, but he look. He may end up being great. No, he's not. I just don't know that he will with that personnel. Yeah. Not right now. Anyway. All right. All right. We can move on. <laughs> NBA trade deadline, baby. The Grizzlies completely screwed this up. Just take me out back and shoot. Completely screwed. All right, so here's what they did, right? They traded James Ennis to Detroit for Bryce Johnson and a second round pick. So they got him a pick. I'm cool with that. Okay. Give me a pick. All right. Here's the other part, though. Regarding Tyreek Evans, the team, they shut them down or shut him down in anticipation of a trade. The idea was you are. Too good. You are winning games for us right now. We don't want to win games. We want to lose so that we can get the best possible draft pick. And you won't stop making buckets. So, Tyreek, we're just going to sit your ass down. All right? That's and all we're, we're going to do. We're going to find a trade. We're going to find a trade for you. We're going to get you somewhere because you only got half a year left. That's it. And and we only had you on a one-year deal. And you're probably not going to re-sign here anyway. So... We're just going to sit you down for about a week, week and a half, and we're going to find you somewhere to go play where you can go contend. Right? Oh, week and a half later. So here's what happened. Adrian Wojnarowski tweeted, Memphis is still without traction on a Tyreek Evans trade and may keep him, league sources tell ESPN. Grizzlies would try to re-sign him using their mid-level exception this summer. Now, part of me understands that because Lou Williams just signed for three years, $24 million. That's $8 million a year. That's mid-level exception money. I got that. But why would he sign here again? Like, he, somebody will be willing to pay this dude because he gets buckets. Yeah, he's not Lou Williams. That's, that's the com- difference. We're comparing him to a dude he's not like. Exactly. So... On top of that, Alex Kennedy came out and said that Boston offered two second-round picks. We just lost Facebook. Awesome. Let's keep rolling. Let's just keep rolling. All right, uh, so Alex Kennedy said that Boston offered two second-round picks and Gershon Yabusele for Tyreek. The Grizzlies wanted a first-round pick. Would you have done two second-round picks and a project for Tyreek right now? Yes. Well, here's my question. Is anybody else calling? No. Am I negotiating against myself? So if you only have one offer, you take the damn offer. That's what I would do. It's not that hard. No, it's really not. It's really not. I don't understand it. None of it makes sense to me. We're a damn disgrace to the NBA. That's kind of what it seems like. I swear. They don't fire the whole lot of them that run that show. We should have never let Fizz go. Yeah, no, I I believe that. I believe that. This, uh, I don't know what's going on with this thing. Don't worry about it. Just stop, so, just stop worrying about it. Um, So the Cavs. I have no idea what happened to Cleveland. Let so me tell you, here's, let me here's tell you why Cleveland. I hate Twitter. And we've had this conversation before. I know I'm an old man. I don't like Twitter. Why I don't like Twitter. Twitter used to be a great place to go to get information. So I'm getting blown up. Oh, my God. NBA trade deadline. Ah, ah, ah. So I go on Twitter. Hey, there's so break. much stuff going yeah. on that you can't I, keep up I go with. on Twitter, and all I'm getting are people reacting to trades, but nobody telling me what the hell the trades were. So the actual trades, it, and, and I'm not going to go through specific ones, but I'll let you know who they lost and who they gained. That's, right? that's Here's what the they gist got. of it. They dropped Isaiah Thomas, okay. Derek Rose, Dwayne Wade, Jay Crowder, Channing Frye, and Iman Shumpert. They lost all of them. So that's the whole team. Basically the whole team. Hey, that Shumpert contract was garbage. Uh, yeah, definitely. 
Did you say J.R. Smith was in that too? No, J.R. Oh. Smith is not. He's still back, on the team. That contract's garbage. Here's too. what they picked up. They should have dumped that one. George Hill, Rodney Hood, Jordan Clarkson, and Larry Nance Jr. I don't know any of those players. Okay, I was gonna. My next question was gonna be: Is that I, enough talent to get LeBron okay. back to the finals? Okay. I know who George Hill is. I I do not know any of the rest. of those You don't guys. know Rodney Hood. So I, he came from Utah. He's a three point specialist. He's but he's awesome. The Grizzlies okay. should have taken him. That's fine. A few drafts no, ago, he he might have been good. I just didn't know him. They the Grizzlies could have taken him I'm instead of how, uh, many, how many Utah games I've watched. What was the uh, Rodney Hood played at Mississippi State and then he transferred to Duke. Um, so you might have at least had an idea. Yeah. Um, what was the kid's name? Jordan, uh, whatever, the kid from UCLA that the Grizzlies took that ended up injured for his entire career. Oh, yeah, he was supposed to be like some great defensive specialist point guard dude. Yeah. Got a lot um, of steals, right? Was that him? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, I remember that guy. Uh, but he didn't get a ton of steals because he was hurt forever, and he never well, – I mean, in college he got a lot of steals. Yeah, in that's, college, yes. That's why they yes. took him. Was... Um, they thought he'd be a great defensive player. Player, yeah. Right, he'd go alongside Tony Allen and all That's that kind of mess. Like, if if I if I were the Grizzlies, I would have traded Tyreek to to New Orleans because New Orleans is trying to get a playoff spot, right? And they need another score, especially now that Boogie's out yeah. for God knows how long. So they needed another score, and no deal, no nothing. I would have traded for uh, a pick and Tony Allen. We're a disgrace. Chris Wallace should have got this deal done. Any kind of deal done. You cannot have Tyreek if your goal is to, quote, develop young talent. Like, what are you going to do? Just sit him on the goal, bench for the rest of the year? Our goal is to finish 15th in the league. That's our goal. That's our destiny. Well, 15th in the conference or No, whatever. in the league, in the association. We're going to finish You want to finish 30th. No, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I can't tell you why their goal is to finish 15th, but that's what it looks like. Oh, that's what, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, just like right outside the we, lottery. Right? We suck. We are unenjoyable to watch. We are trying like hell to win games, but we can't. It's like watching a – never mind. But, like, why it's, would you continue to try to win it's games absolutely at absolutely absurd. We – anyway. I'm with you. We should I'm have traded you. everybody. Uh, I'd have put everybody up. And then I'd have called Fizz and said, I'm sorry. Back to the Cavs. What do you think the Cavs are trying to do here? I, have, I, I don't know any of these people. That Well, they're all young scorers now, and whatever. Okay, I'm going right? to bet all these young guys are cheap. And I'm going to bet Dan Gilbert has made it clear. Okay, Bron Bron's leaving. I'm making any deal I can make to get as many draft picks as possible and dump as much of this bullcrap salary as I can dump. That's exactly what he did. He should have thrown J.R. Smith in. <laughs> I don't know that anybody him. wanted him. They were like, no, nah, you had to give us something more for that. No, I think you are probably right there. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and uh, let's get this out of the way. This is the end of the show. We appreciate everybody for coming in. Remember, listen to us on iTunes, subscribe, download, review us, all that good stuff. Share it out, Facebook, Twitter, uh, anywhere else, YouTube, whatever. If just, it ever gets up working on those. Just, just tell people about the show how's that just tell people about the show Correct. we'll do that so we watched ufc fight night 125 on saturday night correct that was live from brazil eric anders against leoto the dragon Mashita. and what that fight meant for the ufc right ufc fight night 125 on fs1 drew eight hundred thirty nine thousand viewers not great didn't even get to a million now, it did rank better than ESPN's uh, top-ranked boxing match, right? But nobody knew who any of those guys were on ESPN. But this did outdraw that. Here's the deal. That fight didn't happen until, I mean, it didn't even start until close to midnight. Yep. It was bananas. So, and, and I know that sometimes you can't do anything about that. But one, you got to find a way to get your headliner on earlier than midnight, especially if it's on cable. You're talking about midnight central time. So that means all the East Coast. It was people, after 1 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock. That's insane to me. Uh, on top of that, MMADecisions.com, they had 22 UFC experts judge that fight. 16 of them said that Anders won the fight, and only six said Machida did. And yet, the judges in Brazil, two of them gave the fight to Machida, and one of them gave it to Anders. So Machida ends up winning the split decision. The UFC needed Anders to win that fight via knockout. 
right? Like he, they needed he him. He he did not do that. He that's, got close a couple times. That's not UFC's fault. That's agreed. His fault. Agreed. But they needed him to win that via knockout to hopefully become the next big star in the sport. Andrews is a striker. That's what he's known for. He's he's a puncher. That would have helped with his marketability, kind of like it did with McGregor. Um, so that fight didn't do much. The co-headline fight didn't help anything either. Uh, Valentina uh, Shevchenko, fifteen and three in the MMA. She's four and two in UFC. She's the one that beat Holly Holm. Uh, she beat up on Priscilla Cachoeira. She's Brazilian, and this was about as ugly as it gets. This was brutal. It was nasty. Uh, the UFC is, quote, upset yes. with referee Mario Yamasaki for not stopping the fight sooner. Look, Priscilla lost it on strikes 217 to 1. She got one punch in. Yeah, we watched that in the middle of the first round. We were thinking, call they got to the call this. Call the fight. It went a whole nother round. Yeah, it was they, late in the second when they finally got it. Late in the second when he finally called it. And I just don't understand how you could let a girl get beat about the face. That long. She was super bloody early on and in the was, first round. It was grueling. Yeah. It was grueling. It was bad. It's, uh, you and I almost just turned the fight yeah, off. Like we, we couldn't I, handle it. This is not what I want to watch. I like watching MMA. I like watching these fights, but but I'm not an animal. No. I, I'm, you know, I don't want to watch dog fighting. This is, that, that got to the point where it was sick. It should have been called early in the second. And on top of that, Yamasaki missed the first two tap outs. Before he finally right. caught the third one. Finally, that's what I kept saying: is quit hitting her in the face and just choke this poor girl out. And and so, she did, but she she was choking her, and the girl was tapping, tapping, and he missed the taps twice. That is absolutely absurd, and there's no excuse for it. You don't get to drink and go to work. You're not an airline pilot. That's it. Jeez. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him reffing anymore. Yeah. Uh, Tim Johnson's win over Marcelo Gomes was cool. Uh, Tiago Santos' win over Anthony Smith. That was like the fight of the night. Um, and then we enjoyed Douglas Silva's win over Marlon Chito, Chito. Vera. Chito! Chito got beat. Oh, but, but listen. But, I, man, he looked, he took I'll, his ass whipping. I'll bet that horse any day of the week. Believe that, because he, he wasn't going down. No. I there thought was no that chance. guy was going to get knocked out like five times. He didn't leave his feet, man. So the reason that we're bringing this up is while some of these fights were great, Problem is, nobody knows who they are. That's right. Nobody knows who any of these fighters are. Who do we know? That's a problem. That I knew Eric Anders. Who do we know? Here's here's what we got. This brings us up to the point in the UFC the where... The guy I know? Connor. That's who yeah, I know. Yeah, that's who you know. But that's, here, here's that's the thing. That's who I turn on the TV to watch. The biggest UFC stars, the ones that actually bring in viewers, they are not currently fighting. That is a problem. you got to figure something out, right? Nick and Nate Diaz, they're waiting for a big fight. Ronda Rousey signed a contract with WWE. Brock Lesnar is in the WWE. Bones Jones, he's got a drug suspension. So he's uh, gone for like and another a, and a drug long. problem. And a drug problem. GSP came back for one fight in 2017, but you could see he's getting older. So there's not going to be a whole lot there. And not to mention the fact that his fights are sometimes not exactly fun to watch anyway. Yeah. Uh, Anderson the Spider Silva. He's done. He's, he's done. 40 some years old. Well, and, he, and he lost like, what, four fights or three fights to end his. Uh, to end whatever. Hey, he's 40. Um, the dude's fighting over the age of 40. That's crazy. Yeah. McGregor has not fought in the octagon since November 2006. That was a win over Eddie Alvarez to get the light heavyweight belt. It hadn't been. No, he's fought since 2006. No, sir. 2006? You and I watched Two, No, McGregor. 2016. I'm sorry. Holy My God. Bad. I was about to say, he wasn't even... He was like 12. Yeah, he was like 12 in 2006. All right. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm decently good at math. I'm really bad with words. Sorry, I misspoke there. Holy I, that's crap. that's my bad. I, 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 I misspoke. I wasn't um, smart enough to think. I was trying to do math. I was like, how old is he? Look. Maybe I'm wrong. UFC has always had a pay scale set up, right? They have taken advantage of fighters and whatnot, and it has worked to their advantage for a long time. Conor McGregor has absolutely ripped that thing to shreds. They are paying Conor more than anybody else. Because he is worth more than anybody else in the sport. Yes, they absolutely should. So here's the deal. UFC needs a Mayweather-McGregor MMA fight. Can we not get McGregor fighting another MMA dude? I, I'm going to get to that. Here's the thing. The UK Telegraph's boxing writer, Gareth A. Davies, told Talk Sport this week that behind-the-scenes talks are already underway for a match between McGregor and Mayweather in the UFC octagon. Obviously, the only way making that fight again makes any sense 
is if Mayweather comes over to the octagon, uh, octagon, Dana White said on FS1 Wednesday. We went over and boxed him, the UFC and Conor McGregor, and now it's time for him to reciprocate and come fight in the octagon. Now, Mayweather is not slowing down the talk. He's come out. He said he wants to do, or he wants to be a billion-dollar man. He wants, like, close to a billion dollars for a four-fight deal with the UFC, which is absurd. Like, so he's going to fight four fights? That's what he says. Well, I, he's going to have to do some warm-ups? Is that what he's saying? I'm thinking he will last, like, a fight. Here's my problem. So they sign him up to do some warm-up fights, and he gets his ass whooped by some no-name chunk. Well, it's kind of like what CM Punk did, right? Yeah. CM Punk comes from WWE, everybody, and they're going to throw him a bone, right? They'll put him in with a wrestler he, it, that CM, won't hit you. Well, no, CM Punk They'll absolutely. Choke your butt out. And CM Punk got choked. He got smacked around. And, and this kid, uh, the kid's name was Mickey Gall. Yeah. Nobody thought much about him. Like, he was a fighter, and he was on a UFC contract. He yeah, was young. but like He's just a dude. But CM Punk has been training, and he's known how to do this his whole life. But... He got his ass beat, yep. and that was in 2016, and he hadn't fought since. So it, he's still on a contract, so we may see him like when they come through Chicago later on this year. But look, there is literally nothing the UFC could throw out there that would be bigger than this one, right? They oh, no. Bavada has already come out. Like At first, estimates are showing a UFC fight between McGregor and Mayweather would be over $500 million. That's how much it would be worth. I think it'd be close to what the last one was because people would feel like there's more of a shot of Mayweather getting his ass beat. That's and, what and that people want to see. Exactly. So I think it'd be worth more than what the other one was. I think. My but, fear is, is him and Connor done become buddies. He's helping Connor learn how to spend that money. Yeah. And Connor won't actually whoop his butt. I don't know about all that. I think once you get in the ring, it's a different thing. I disagree. I think these dudes are friends. <sighs> You, I hope you're I'm wrong. My spirit, man. I hope I'm wrong. Look, I'm sorry. I don't mean it's to, all good. It's I don't all mean good. To, I don't mean to eat each ice cream in front of you, but it's just look. Bavada has placed odds on the on the theoretical fight. Mayweather at plus five fifty and McGregor at minus nine hundred. That sounds about right. It's almost identical to what the last one was, only flipped. Which is or we'll call it a mirror image. How's that? Um, the issue at Conor McGregor is bigger than UFC. Right, if he just wanted to fight, he could fight Khabib or Tony Ferguson or whoever for that light heavyweight title, right? But uh, what what does it do for him? Like he's propping up somebody else at that point. Like it, fighting these guys that people don't really know. Like you've got your diehard UFC fans, yeah. But I guarantee you, ninety five percent of the people that are listening to our show right now have no idea who Khabib is. They have no idea who Tony Ferguson is, and they're fighting for the interim lightweight title. I didn't know right? who a soul was that we were, we came over and watched. Saturday. Exactly, not like one it, dude, and and that's what's nuts. So I, one dude I remember when it was over with. That's Cheeto. I don't the know dude how that lost that I'm like I'll bet on that guy every fight he ever fights. Yeah, and that's because he had that awesome mustache when yeah. he just kept taking it. Oh, like, and he could take a whip and, and, and he was throwing it back. He was right. throwing it back, but he did get whipped pretty good. I love that guy. Uh, I don't know how the UFC gets past the fact that that they made McGregor bigger than their entire league. Like, nobody currently is worth fighting for him. Like, if he beats these guys, it's expected. If he loses, like, it hurts his legacy. Like, only Mayweather is a big enough name for him. What does the UFC do at this point? Like, it, it, they used to be able to, to create superstars. The only people anybody is worried about right now is Conor McGregor. That's it. He's the only dude that's entertaining. This is what we talked about Saturday when we were hanging out. We... They, they somehow have to find a way to teach these guys you can win, but you have to win with style. Yeah. And if you make this thing boring to watch, nobody's going to show up. The problem with Anders the other night is he kept dancing around like he didn't take risks. And sometimes you're going to have to take risks. Like, are you got to be talking enough smack to be able to get them to take risks? Therein lies the problem. Like, if I take the risk or if I do it flashy, in UFC, you take a real good chance of getting caught, getting knocked out, and then you lose. So is it better to look bad and win or look good and lose? And that's the gamble. If you can look good and win, you can end up being Conor McGregor. Yeah. If you look bad and win, you're all the rest of these dudes with a great record. Exactly. Like you got to take some risks. Making make a couple dollars. That's it. That's all it is. It's so frustrating. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. Oh, what a, what a night this has been. 
we couldn't got, get Facebook working for nothing. Look, man. We're we going to get we it made, rolling. We made it through? Yeah, we did. We're pros. We are pros. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to get through this. We're going to get the next one going up uh, Sunday night. We doing Sunday? Sure. Sunday night. I we'll try it up do. about what? 7 o'clock? You want to do that? Yeah, man. 7 p.m. Central Time Sunday evening. We'll be live on Facebook, That's Periscope. Time zone. All that good stuff. We'll see you the next go around. Don't forget iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, Facebook Live, Periscope. We'll worry about YouTube later. We'll see what's up. Either way, <laughs> share it out. Go to the website, winningcureseverything.com. We appreciate you guys for being here, and we'll catch y'all the next go round. Later. It's time for the rundown. Remember, check out winningcureseverything.com. You can give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter, at winningcures. You can follow myself, at Gary WCE. You follow me at Chris B. Giannini, C-H-R-I-S-B-G-I-A-N-N-I-N-I. You can also email the show, that's winningcureseverything at gmail.com. And we now have a voicemail line. That number is 551-226-9899. If you want to call and bash us for talking bad about your favorite team or praise us or just tell us about how awesome your team is doing, leave us a voicemail. That number again is 551-226-9899, and we may toss it on the show. Thank you for supporting this show, and until next time, have a good one, guys.